Hi, and welcome to Broomster Puzzles, the channel where I try and show you the fun that can be had in the world of variant Sudoku. Today I'm going to be doing that with what I've been told is an easy but fun puzzle called Pulsar by Gerhard1963 or 1963. Um, and this is a puzzle that uses a couple of very standard constraints in a way that, uh, yeah, I should give us some fairly easy early deductions and see how it goes from there. So the cages and the XV pairs constraint are very, very common constraints. Constraints um, and are a lot of fun when used well, and we'll see how we go with this one. Of course, in the description below, there'll be a link to this puzzle, um, as well as to its page on Logic Masters Germany, where if you're a member there, um, you can go and rate this puzzle if you wish to. Um, I don't really have anything I want to call out at the moment because I'm... <sighs> I'm recording around not being very well, um, which is a kind of why I'm doing an easy puzzle. Um, people, people told me this was easy and fun, so I wanted to give it a try. Let's have a look at the rules. So we've got normal Sudoku rules apply, apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, we need to put the digits one through nine without repetition. We've then got cages. So digits in cages must sum to the, cannot repeat and must sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage. So we know those three digits sum to 11 because there's an 11 at the top. These three cages, uh, three digits sum to 14 because there's a 14 in the top left. These sum to 16. And these ones, um, for example, we couldn't do the 16 with two sixes and that's 12 and a four because that would repeat the sixes in the cage. It does not work. Um, you, even though these do not see each other by Sudoku, you cannot repeat digits in a cage. Now, XV pairs, um, digits in cells separated by a V sum to five, digits in cells separated by an X sum to 10, and not all possible Xs and Vs are necessarily given. So it might be fine for those two cells to sum to five or 10. That would be fine. You do not need an X and V. It's just that where they're given, they are forced to be those sums. They're the rules. I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Hopefully this will be a nice easy one. Let's give this a shot. There are some very immediate things that jump out at you. These two cells sum to 10, but those three cells sum to 14. So 14 minus 10, that is a four. And we can repeat this on all of these cages, I think. Five, 10 minus five is five. 13 minus 10 is three. 14 minus 10 is four. 11 minus 10 is is one. 16 minus 10 is six. 15 minus 10 is five. 12 minus five is seven. 11 minus five is six. 13 minus 10 is three. 15 minus 10 is five. 13 minus 10 is three. 10 minus five is five and 12 minus 10 is two. And we get all of those digits to start with. Now we've got to do some deductions. So how can these sum to five? Well, there's only two ways to sum to five, one, four, and two, three. And this can't be one, four because there's already a four in the box. So this is two, three, and this three is telling us that that's the two and that's the three. So how do you sum to 10? Well, unlike five, which has to be made up only of digits lower than five, 10 has more options. You can never put a five on an X. That's an important thing to note. So for example, in box five, using that logic, I can see this cell is on an X, this cell is on an X, this cell is on an X, and this cell is on an X. So this has to be the five in the box. Why can you never put five on an X? Because the cell on the other side of an X would need to be a five. And because they're all on edges, you'd end up with two fives in a column or a row. It doesn't work. But um, the other other thing um, about an X is you must have one digit below five and one digit above five. Two digits below five, um, because you can never use a five, the maximum would be three, four, which is seven. And if you could only go above five, the minimums would be six and seven, which is 13. So you must have one below five and one above five. But there's only one digit below five available for this X because two, three, and four is gone. So this is a one nine. Let's use the correct pencil marks. Um, so this is a one nine. The four here also says that this has to be two three, which means that this has to be one, this has to be one four, and this very same four is telling us that that's the one and that's the four. This three is looking up, making that the two and that the three. These are not um, fairly easy deductions, but they're fun. This has to be the high digit because one, two, three, four is gone. So this has to be eight or nine, which means this has to be one or two. That's all fine. But these are from five, eight, and nine. And this five is saying that's not the five. So this is the five. 
So this is a triple of digits because we've used two, three, five, seven, eight, and nine. So these are one, four, and six. Now this one can't be a one or a four. So that's the six and I can take six out of those. If this is a, well, this can't be a one because of the one looking up. That's the four, that's the one. Four goes with six to make 10. Cool. So what can these be? Well, actually, yeah, where can I put nine in this box is the other way to look at it, because the nine on an X would need to go with a one. And I don't have a one available. Now, the way I looked at this is there's four ways to make an X, one, nine, two, eight, three, seven, and four, six. And these need to be two of the ways to make an X, but I don't have one, nine or four, six available. So these have to be two, two, eight, and three, seven. This has to be the nine going with a one. Now, so these are 2, 8, and 3, 7. This can't be the 3, 7 because of that 3. In fact, where does 3 go in this box? That's the 3 because by Sudoku, making that the 7. And this becomes a 2, 8, which makes that the 1, which makes that the 9, which makes that the 8. Okay, this is easy, but it's fun. 1 makes this 9 and this 1. This is exactly what I needed while I'm recovering. This is 7 and 8. These are triples now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and this is six and a seven already in column four. That's the eight. These are a six, seven. These are two, three, and nine. There are threes already in those columns, so this is the three, and don't know about the two, nine yet. Let's look at something else, because there's a lot going on. Okay, so let, how do we do this V? Because we can't use two, three, because there's a two in the box. So this is one, four. The one is looking down saying that's not the one. So that's the one and that's the four. This needs to have a low digit on it and one, two, four is not available. So this is three, seven. The three here is telling us that that's the seven and that's the three. The seven is now looking up making that the eight and that the seven. This is all becoming way more restricted. These, I've got one, two, three, four, five. These are six, seven, and eight. There's no six in either of those two. So this is the six. This seven now makes this the eight and this the seven. I need a low digit on this X and one, two, three is not available. So this is the four, six, and those two sixes both see that cell. So that's the four and that's the six. This is a pair, which is an eight, nine pair because they're the digits that haven't been placed in the box. But this eight is looking down, making that the nine and that the eight. I need a low digit on this. This could be two, eight, uh, it has to be because the only options, one, nine, not available. Two, eight is available. Three, seven is not available. And four, six is not available. This is two, eight. And the two is looking down, making that the eight and that the two. These now need a low digit. Hmm. Yes, yes. It can't. This could be one, nine. It can't be two, eight. It can't be three, seven. And it can't be four, six because of the six up here. This is one, nine. And the one here is looking across, making that the nine and that the one. And have I done all the cages yet? Not quite, but I'm getting close, I feel. This is a triple. I always like marking triples. Four, six, seven. And there's a four already in that column. So this becomes the four. The other thing is... Why do I mark like this? I could have seen that if I'd scanned and just written the four in here. But if I mark the digits and put the triple in and then eliminate down, it's easier to follow on the video. And I think that's important. I would I notice when I'm watching other people solve um, that if they just say, oh, that's this digit and I'm having trouble following it, it breaks the flow of the video. Um, this is a short puzzle, so I feel comfortable actually interrupting to 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 explain what's going on. Whereas if I was to turn around and say, well, these have to be a six, seven, rather than just saying, well, that's a seven and that's a six, people who don't follow along may get a little lost and then they'd have to pause and figure it out and everything. Um, whereas I'd prefer to say, well, this is a six, seven pair and then this six looks over making that the seven and that the six. If I do that and make sure that it's easier for people to follow along with the video, I think it makes the video easier for newer people and easier to engage with. Because when you lose that visual flow, when you lose Lose that that connection. I know when I'm watching other people and I lose the connection of what they're doing and I can see, okay, I've seen the logic, but I've lost the flow of how they're doing it. I, I mentally check out and I don't want people to mentally check out, particularly if they're new. Um, anyway, so this is 
this is a triple because I've got six digits in the row. So these are two, six, and eight. And there's already a six and an eight in this column. So that's the two. And I take the two out of those. The two looks up making that the nine and that the two. Um, do I have any? Yeah, the two now looks down making that the eight and that the two. And then the eight can look down making that the six and that the eight. The six now looks up making that the seven and that the six. This is a triple. Now I could just write them in. But as I was saying, if I write in five, seven, and nine, which are the digits that are missing from the box, it's then easier for me to say this is a 5, 9, meaning that's the 7, remove the 7, the 5 looks down making that the 9 and that the 5. Easier to follow along visually. In this column, I'm only missing a single digit, which seems to be a 9. So that's a 9. And in here, this box, I haven't put 1, 2, and 5. Well, there's already a 1, 5 in this row, making that the 2, remove the 2. And this one is looking across, making this the 5 and this the 1. This is a pair. Well, now that I'm down to a single box, I often, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I could pencil mark this pair, pencil mark this pair, or pencil mark these triples. The other way of doing it is say, let's just keep putting in digits where they can go until, and any of these are valid, until I'm down to just a triple or something where I can pencil mark. So I need to put a two in this box. These twos say not in those rows, so it's in one of those two. Then this two says not here, and this is the two. I now need to put a three in. These two threes say not in those, so three is in one of those three. These two threes say it's not in those, and that becomes a three. I need to put four in. Well, actually, yeah, these th these two fours say not there, so it has to be in one of those two. That four says not there, that's a four. I need to put a five in. It's not in either of those two because of that. It's not there because of that. This is a five. So these now are just the ones I haven't placed, which is seven, eight, and nine. There's a seven and an eight in this column. That becomes the nine. I remove the nine, and then I can use that eight to make that the seven, that the eight. Slower to solve it that way. I actually really enjoyed this puzzle. Slower to solve it this way, but I think it's easier to follow along visually. I'm interested in what people think because I've been doing puzzles this way for a long time and I'm actually recording a different puzzle series, the World Puzzle Federation puzzles, and I'm recording months in advance on those because while I've been unwell, it's been really, really helpful for me to have those puzzles to work on. Um, and... Um, I've been using this technique because I've had so I've got some real life friends who are just getting into the hobby and they've been using the um, the World Puzzle Federation puzzles I have released as a way of learning and they've found that the way I explain has been useful. But I'm curious what other people think. Is it a good way of doing it? Is it not a good way of doing it? I want to point out Gerhard one nineteen sixty three. Thank you for this puzzle. Good fun easy puzzles don't come along very often. Um, now, this was a sub 10 minute solve. Okay. Did it deserve a channel feature? I don't know, but I enjoyed it and that's good enough for me. And I needed something a bit light. So you get something light. If you're after something a bit more meaty, check out one of the other over 1200, well, nearly 1500 puzzles on the channel. I'm sure one of those will uh, meet your criteria. If you're looking for something really hard and you've never solved it, go check out my puzzle, Grid Dancing. That'll be a killer puzzle that'll break your brain. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, I might throw a link to Grid Dancing below and see how that one goes. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you're having fun with what we're trying to bring to the channel. I would like to put a very big thank you into Full Deck Missing a Few Cards and Doom Jot for covering for me while I've been struggling. Um, and as always, good luck with your solving.